Liz, I just want to know what I'm locked in for. Or, or am I charged? Like, what the fuck's going on? Like, I'm in limbo, like, in the middle of nowhere. Yep. I'm not allowed to, like, talk to anyone, see anyone. So he's come, the pip has come up, like, one of the seniors. Yep. He goes, oh, if you, you ring him again, we've got intel, you're going to get stabbed at fucking Goulburn, rah, rah, rah. Um, I'll move you straight there. So I was like, next morning, they call me, pack your shit, you're going to Goulburn. I'm like, all right, sweet, you know. But the Goulburn, when you get to Goulburn, there's, there's always, like... Uh, a couple of yeah, they'll try and give you a couple of options, you know, because it, it's known to be a pretty hectic jail. They said, "Oh, this this yard, this yard." I said, "No, nah, put me in that yard because yeah, I knew they were gonna fucking, you know." Yeah. I thought you think I'm fucking scared? I'll go out there. Yeah, yeah. Went up to them. The the three that ended up stabbing me, like, so hey boys, like big smile on my face. That's what I do, cocky cunt, yeah, right? Yeah. yeah. They're all like, oh hey bro, hey bro, like this, you know, like being quiet and then And I'd had drama with all of them in the past. One of them was actually in the gang unit with me to like the point where I was trying to give him forms to mix with me and that. Yeah. Um, the other two I'd had drunk, but never at the same where they were all together, you know. Then I'm like, oh, fuck this, you know. So I'm doing laps. One of the boys that's trying to mail me is going, oh, Pato, just watch out for them cunts. I'm like, bro, they're not going to do shit, bro. Fuck them. They're fucking gronks, you know. Yeah. So I start doing laps and I'm thinking, fuck this. I'm going to ring my fucking um, ex, right? So I go to jump on the phone jump on I'm just like listening to the phone ring and then I just feel like bang 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 like I felt two taps on that side and one on that side yep. so I've like turned this way I'm thinking I knew straight away you know I've never been stabbed before but like it's just like you just know you know yeah, yeah. And it wasn't like a punch and it, it, I didn't really feel it but I just knew like like that you know I was just like what the fuck right so I've turned that way them two have like sort of run into the same spot and fell over each other I've turned the other way I had no idea who the other person was, like, at first. He's, um, folded down the end of the yard. I fucking shit myself. I'm thinking, fuck, this guy's going to get me in the spine. Like, first sport, you know? I'm thinking, yeah. if they hit, I've seen people get hit in the spine before and just drop. You can't yeah. move, you know? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so I'm just fun, and I'm, like, trying to back up to the fence and fucking watch, watch these two cunts and then trying to figure out who the first person is. And they're coming in, like, rah, like like swinging their blades in there like fucking Mohicans trying to scare me or something I'm thinking fuck well I knew like individually like they had a bit of fear in them you know yep, like yep. To, to confront me so I was like just kept like jumping at them individually yep, yep. But, and then try, still trying to back up at the same time um, I ended up running at one hitting one then the other one just fucking went bang 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 like got me a few was come running over I just see all these gas coming over me I'm like fuck right now I'm thinking my eyes, my my breathing, you know, so yeah, I just tried to get under it and still watch him. As soon as the, the squad's come in, he's like, fucking stay right there. And then I looked at him, I'm thinking, no fucking way. Like, the first thing in my head was, like, revenge, you know. Yeah. I'm thinking, fuck these cunts. Like, I don't want them to think they've got me or I'm not having a nerd come in and wheel me out. Yeah. But yeah. someone's yelling out to me from the other yard. They're like, fuck, Pato, you all right, brother? You all right? I said, yeah, I'm fucking sweet, bro. No effect. And I'm just, like, walking, you know, like, walking like fucking... I was taking a fucking Sunday walk. Yeah, yeah. Then a few of my other mates on the way, they're like, bro, Pato, you are right? You are right? I'm like, yeah, boys, I'm right. But in the clinic, they're like, mate, you're, um, you are right? You are right? You're going fucking white and shit. I'm like, what? Then they stop, they're freaking me out now. I'm thinking, what do you mean I'm going white? You know? Yeah, yeah. So you are right? And then they're cutting my clothes off me and shit, you know? I'm like, what the hell? I'm sitting there naked. I'm like, what the fuck is going on, you know? Yeah. What's up, guys? Welcome back. Another episode of the Tonksy Media Podcast. Today's guest is a very interesting bloke. He has a very unique and interesting story of redemption. Uh, he spent 12 out of 16 years locked up in jail. Um, a lot of things happened. He was stabbed nine times, almost lost his life, had a spiritual awakening and uh, come out of jail and become a very, very uh, recognised artist. Uh, with his paintings. Please welcome to the podcast, Nathan Patterson. Welcome, brother. Hey, mate. How are you? Good, mate. Good. I, uh, I appreciate you coming on, bro. Um, yeah, I've obviously come across you on TikTok, bro, watching a few of your war stories and this and that. And, um, yeah. and you know, there's one thing I admire is no matter how hectic the story is, you always somehow find a way to put a bit of humour into it, whether you laugh and, like, it's just, it's attractive, you know, like. Um, yeah. But, uh, yeah, that's, that's uh, yeah, I'm, I'm stoked to have you on, bro. Um, 
yeah, let's let's kick it off, bro. Give us a bit of a rundown on your childhood and you know where you come from, and um, and yeah, we'll we'll go from there, man. I right, say so, yeah. I grew up in um, <clears throat> I was born in Villawood in Sydney's west. I um, moved to Guildford, went to um, primary school in Guildford, uh, high school in Maryland, Central Hill, Canley Vale. I got kicked out of a few um, schools for fighting and that. I'm um, always just yeah, just always hung around like a. In that area, it's a lot of um, gangs and violence and bikies and drugs, and it's just like all the housing commission and that there. Yep. So I just grew up in all that stuff, and um, like it was just a, it's sort of like jail was a rite of passage. Like when you come from that area, you know, like I always expected it, even from primary school that I'd go there. Yep, yep. And I thought, like, yeah, come from that area, it, it's a lot of us just think that that's how your life's meant to go, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, right. So, um, <clears throat> sort of you around like housing commission sort of um sort of upbringing, bro. Um, I suppose you was destined to you know sort of go down the crime path and um and whatnot, bro. Yeah, yeah. Just being around all them people and that that's all you see around there, you know. So you just you become a product of your environment. Like, yeah, when you, when you just see that, you know, it's just um like that's what you aspire to. Yeah, hundred percent, bro. Yeah, I can relate. Well, yeah. I can relate there for sure. You know, it's um, yeah, it's definitely a product of your environment. It's yeah, hundred yeah, percent. Like, um, I believe you you started to get into drugs and stuff, bro. Can you give us a bit of a spiel on you know that that journey? Yeah. So, um, I, I was like, my dad. My dad was never into it, and I, I like always looked up to my dad. Like, no one in my family was really into drugs or anything, but it's the people I hung around that were. Yep. Um. Yeah, so when I was little, like, I'd always train and, and boxing. My dad's really fit in that, so I'd always done that. And um, But then <clears throat> there became a point where, you know, you just hang around people for so long that are using them that you just want to fit in with them, you know. You always feel, like, left out when they're all, like, at first it's just smoking weed. Yeah. And everyone's having a giggle and, and laughing and getting the munchies and that. And you, Otherwise, you've got no one to hang around, so you just get into it, you know. Yeah, and you don't believe it's like what they call a gateway drug, but it is because it, it leads you to other things, you know. Definitely, bro. And even even alcohol, you know, it's like yeah, alcohol. Yeah. Alcohol's the worst for me. It was yeah, yeah, yep, yeah. So yeah, it made me made me super violent. Alcohol, like yeah, yep, yeah. I actually have a, a similar story to him. We'll get on, we'll get uh, more into it further in the podcast. Um, you know, you had a pretty violent side to you, bro. Um, I was yeah. the exact same, you know, pub fights and shit and, you know, lost a finger, yeah. lost a finger and all that, you know, so I definitely relate with you, brother. But, but um, yeah, so how old were you, bro, when you sort of started to hit the drugs and that? like? Oh, with the drugs, I wasn't too young, like, compared to a lot of people that from around there, like 16, 15 was the first time I smoked weed. Yeah, okay, yep. I know a lot of my friends had tried it, like, 12, 13. And yeah, yep. Like, really young, you know, yep. but, um... Yeah, I didn't touch it until a bit older, like 16 or whatever. And then it was pretty quick progression from there to touching gas and um, ecstasy was very big back then. Yep, yep. And the drinking, yeah, the drinking, like, come um, hand in hand with it all. Definitely. Like, what What do you mean by gas? I mean, I'm from Tassie, so we, uh, know, we speed. know speed. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. speed. Which is like ice, but, you know, just yeah, yeah, ice is more school. purified or whatever. Yeah. yeah. Just the old school way, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, we, we called it like old school whipper or, uh, you know, just old old school oh, yeah. gack or whatever. That's what, that's what we call it down yeah, there. Yeah, gack, but, yeah. But, um, yeah, right. Like, um, obviously, uh, along with the drug use, bro, a bit of crime started and stuff, did it? Like, Yeah. Well, dr- drugs are, you know, drugs are expensive and and not you don't have many role models around there. Or, like, you know, no one's really working or, or doing um, apprenticeships or still in school, you know, like everyone leaves school early any any time they can, you know, like you're wagging in year eight, year nine, year seven. As soon as anyone's leaving, you're leaving with them. Yeah. And you're hanging out in the streets and you're just trying to copy what the older boys are doing. Yep, yep. Now you're always, yeah, like you're trying to grow up too quick and um, just do what they're doing and you think that's the cool thing to do because that's what everyone's doing and any stories you hear around that area is always, oh, this guy just did this or this guy just robbed this person or this guy sells drugs, you know. So when you're hearing that stuff and everyone's talking about them people, then that's what you think is cool, you know. Definitely, yeah, 100%. Yeah. Yeah, right, yeah, yeah. 
So um, look, what, sort of when did you um, and what sort of crimes and shit did you you know sort of start and around what age and stuff? Just um, yeah, go sort of go into that a bit, bro. Oh, so, so um, yeah, so fifteen, sixteen when I started drugs and the drinking and that was also a time when there was a lot of in Sydney it was um, mostly Asian gangs. A lot of Chinese gangs and that, so I got involved with them at, at around the same age. Yeah, sorry, can I just um, ask, how old are you, bro? And sort of what what sort of? I'm era, forty now, so okay, yeah. So what's yeah? Sort of this era was, was the late nineties. Yeah, okay, yep, yep. Late nineties, yeah, yeah. So so the um yeah, I, I'd be hanging around with the Asians, joined an Asian gang, and um there wasn't many Aussies in there, you know. So you're doing stuff to stand out to like really fit in with them as well, because yeah. you sort of feel out of place as well, but um. Yeah, we go out rolling, and so rolling's like, um, you know, you're robbing adults, um, bashing them and taking their wallets and, and their, their watches or phones or whatever. Mo- mobile phones come out then, like 5110s and all that. And, yeah, yeah. And you'd get them and you'd be able to get 200 bucks. And when you're a kid, you know, that's a, that's a lot back then. Fucking oath, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Other than, you know, you work at Macca's, you've got to work all week to get, you know, 100 bucks. So <laughs> yeah, for sure. You can go get a phone, get 200 bucks, and, and everyone's like, Clapping you on and shit, like yeah, definitely, yeah. So yeah, you think it's a cool thing, you know? Yeah. So what you, you say you joined the joined this Asian gang? Was this like like a street gang or, or in jail or what? Like, yeah, yeah. Singwa, yeah, yeah. But there was like Singwa, fourteen K, one oh eight, um, like White Tiger and Black Dragon, uh, Big Circle came along, like a lot, lot of Asian gangs around then. Yeah, you hear um, the stories. Pretty much like, every suburb. Yeah, yeah, you hear the stories about about the Asians, bro. You know, like where, where I'm from in Tassie, it's a different world. You know, even in prison, it's not. You know, it's not the the Asians are only sort of just starting to take over there now. It's like Sydney yeah. is sort of the first first sort of spot, eh? Like, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah it all starts. Yeah, yeah right. So when, when did you sort of first, um, you know, first get pinched and 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 whatnot? You know, and um and start to sort of start your sort of road to prison and stuff, bro? Oh, so first pinch was probably, um, like, I, I had a best mate who was Tongan. Um, he used to get into a lot of trouble, you know, and then i I become good friends with him. So, um, yeah, it was just natural for me to start getting arrested with him, uh, st- stolen cars, stealing stuff from, um, stealing stuff from, like, the shops and that, like, Rebel Sport and stuff, yeah, just yeah. basically stealing, like, most of it, yeah, and stolen cars and, um, I don't think I ever got done for any robberies when I was younger. But, um, yeah, it was all mostly stealing stuff and that. I, I never went to juvie, actually, but I did accumulate a lot of charges back then and yep, yep. just get, you know, you get all like all the bonds and, and what whatnot. Yeah. Yeah, but to get, um, like, my first time in jail was actually in Queensland and that was, like, with the Asians as well. Yeah, okay. We were doing, um, they had me cash and checks for them. Yeah. Like, right. with fake ID. Yeah. So yeah, I got I got caught up there. They sent me into a bank with um, where apparently a bloke got caught a week before. So when I walked in there, there was there was this thing they say, oh, if they jump on the phone, just leave because you don't know if they're calling the police. And we used to go to the um, branch, which was written on the check, yep. so that we knew they had the signature on file because it wasn't all internet back then. Yeah. So um, yeah, so we go into the branch to make sure they didn't jump on the phone. The lady didn't even jump on the phone. I swear I was there for like 30 seconds and the detectives were standing right next to me. So, yeah, I, I don't know if I got set up. I still think about it now. Like, yeah, yeah. It just felt like they were way too quick to be there, you know. But, yeah, I got arrested with a heap of checks, heap of um, IDs and stuff. Yeah. So what's but, Yeah, that was my first. I went to Arthur Gorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like they're in Mount Santa up there, yeah. I got, I got bailed pretty quick. I think I was only there for five days or something. Yeah, okay, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. So that was sort of your yeah. first, um, your first sort of taste of jail, like. Yeah, yeah, it was. Yeah. What? How did you feel, bro? You know, like in all honesty, how was what was the feelings and and stuff going in there for your first time, being from Sydney? Oh, for as me, well. yeah, it was a little bit scary. Like I didn't know anyone. Yeah. I didn't know a single person there. You know, I just flown up there like two days earlier. Yeah. Um. Yeah, it was scary, and it was it was different from Sydney, even though. The first time I got locked up in Sydney, it was um, like I, I had always expected that in my life and I sort of felt comfortable going in there, but I knew that I'd know people. Yeah, yeah, of course. And, yeah. And it was, um, yeah, it wasn't as scary, but New South Wales jail is a lot more scary than Queensland jail was, you know? Yeah. So it was just I'm from that area, so 
it wasn't I was away from home by myself, you know. Yeah, yep, yep. So what you 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 done a what a week up here and then um what got out? Did you shoot straight back to New South or did you was your bail? Yeah, I stayed up there for a bit on bail and then um ended up getting back down to New South Wales. Um had a uh had a fight with a friend, I ended up bottling him, like with a big gym bean bottle. Yep. Um got arrested for that. Had a had a little um siege at my house and then um got arrested for that and went to jail. So that was my first time down here. Yep. What age were you then, bro? Uh I think I I was still eighteen, just about to turn nineteen. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah, went to um Silverwater then Parramatta. What what was your sentence? Can you remember your first first main um, sentence? Like? I know, I know. I only did a few weeks and got bailed to a rehab, but I got kicked out of the rehab, reoffended, and come back in. Yeah, okay. And then I remember I got um. So my first like thing was uh, two years nine months, I think. Yeah, wow. Well, I ended up doing three. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, nice. And that was like I, I got bail, went to a. I was out for like seven days. Went and um went to a party. My mate, my mate actually rang us up because he got jumped at the party. Yeah, okay. And he got jumped by a, a group of Asians and that said they were Singwa, and so he rang me. And um, I was with a heap of boys, had a couple of carloads, so I rocked up there, seen the boys. I said they're not Singwa, you know, like that was the Asian gang I used to run with. Yeah. Um, I mean, I was out the back and I rang them up. I said just wait out here, and I walked out the back, seen them. I said, oh, there's three guys on the couch, just run around the back, and just the three guys on the couch just get them straight away, you know? Yep. So all these boys come running around, chopped them all. They all took off. Um, I stayed there with my mate. Just, I thought, oh, I see guys come back or something. Well, someone called the police. The police rocked up. I was still there. They grabbed me for it, and, um, yeah, I got done for it all. Fuck, I It wasn't even your yeah. argument, like. <laughs> nah, and I actually didn't even hit anyone then either. Yeah, wow, well, yeah. Yeah, but it was just like, they just knew I was with them, and then you know the police. So the police knew like that the other boys did it, and they sort of asked me, um, "Oh, listen, you give them up, and um, we'll we'll drop the charges on you." And I was like, "Oh, no fucking way!" Like, yeah. So I pretty much just got three years for for them having a fight. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Well, yeah. Sort of. Yeah. Um, your first, your first sort of taste of of Sydney jails, then, bro. What was that like? You know. Yeah. It was. Um, a young boy, different. obviously. I had a lot of, You're still 18, obviously. A young, young lad, like. Yeah, I did have a, lot, a bit of drama at first. You know, I had a few fights, like as you do. Like I, I guess when you go in and, and you're young and that, like people try to pick you. Yeah. Um, other boys that don't have money, ten or whatever, you know, they they say, oh, let's get this guy, let's get this guy. He's by himself, you know, he's young, he's vulnerable. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, so it was a bit hard, you know, until you, you get to a wing where you might know someone, and then you're sweet. Yeah. And obviously, like if you don't, if you don't mind, elaborate a little bit on on you know, um, like you the person you were. You know, you were you was obviously this angry, angry little cunt. Like, um, yeah, you know. So, like, where do you think that that came from, bro? You know, obviously, do you, do you, you know, was it as a you know part of um, your growing up? You know, your family environment or something like you know? Is it? Yeah, well, my dad. Look, I looked up to my dad a lot, and he was. Um like he boxed and, and he took me boxing since I was little and um, like at school, you know, when you win a fight and that, like I'd win a lot of fights, so I'd get a lot of attention. Yeah. And then that would just spur me on and, you know, I just want to level up the next time and then level up and level up and you just become more and more violent, you know, bit by bit because you're getting, like you think it's respect but it's just people fearing you, you know, yeah. but you your name's the getting out there because of this violence, yeah. Yeah. So, you know, and then you hear someone else do something like, Oh, this guy stabbed someone. So you think, oh, well, I'll, I'll stab him twice. Like, yeah, you know, like you want your name to be at the top, so so people aren't fucking with you. You know. Yep, definitely. Yep, I understand exactly yeah. what you're saying there, hundred percent. Yeah. So just yeah, it levels up each time. You know, like you level up on yourself or or what the last bloke did. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. All right, bro. So you you locked up for for you know you end up doing three years for your first major lag and um. Yeah. Can you can you give us a spill on it, like if you can remember sort of any incidents and stuff that happened in there during that time? Or I, yeah, I, I had a um, few fights. Got I actually got jumped a couple of times. Um, yeah, I had a fight at um, someone pulled a kettle on me at Parramatta. 
I tried to pull a blade out on him on mustard because he was he was like with the um, Curry boys, and I thought, fuck, you know, like if I do it in front of everyone else, like I, had, I tried to get him where um, like everyone was. Like I knew I was going to get caught. Yeah. But it was either that or or that they'll all just get me anyway, you know. So yeah, yeah. I tried to get him, but they the screws jumped all over me, and um, I didn't end up getting him. Went to um, still water. Ended up at um, long like had a couple of fights there in the wing. I knew a few Islander boys there, which was lucky. They they were friends with my best friend, so I was pretty all right there, you know. Yeah. Then I got got moved wings. Had a needle pulled on me. Yeah. Right. Um, went to um. What's it called? Um, Long Bay. That's yeah. Long Bay was like um, that was like a real eye opener. You know, you come from Parra, Parra was an old jail, but Long Bay was like no cameras. You know, and they had these small dingy yards, and and there was no like real view for the screws or anything. So a lot of boys like they felt safe taking anyone out. You know, so yeah, you get into a lot of um, a lot of fights like weekly, like you know, every couple of days people would be getting dragged out of there or jumped on. I ended up having a fight with um, this Lebanese bloke that uh, a lot of people were scared of. He'd been running the yard for a while there, you know? Yep. And I was like, like, I tried to be friends with him at first because I was like, you know, I come from Maryland and that, and I did get along with a lot of the Lebanese boys, but he just took a liking to me where he um, he wanted something off me because you could get clothes sent in there. Yeah, okay. So my mum sent me some stuff for my birthday, and he asked me to wear it for his birthday for visits. So I've given it. I've given him a shirt, and then he's tried to stand over me for it. And I was like, "Nah, bro, my mum gave me that, you know." Like yeah, of instantly, and he's pulled his shirt up. He had a um, pair of scissors there that someone had stolen from the office. Yep. So as soon as I seen them orange handles, I just elbowed him, dropped him, let him up. I tried to grab the scissors, but the boys grabbed them. <clears throat> and then I was like, "Shit! Like I really got to get this guy because um, like he had a bit of a reputation. So I was like, I, I really got to fuck him up, you know." Yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah, sort of tried to jump on his head, like smashed his head into the wall, jumped on his head a little bit. The boys told me, oh, watch out, watch out, screws, 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 you know. I ran into the shower, um, like face away from the screw because I had a bit of blood on me. The screw's gone, Patterson, turn around, you know, and I'm going, fuck, turns around, had blood all on me. Well, this guy, he's always like, he was always a dick with the screws, so they didn't like him either. Yeah. Okay. They've gone, listen, we'll give you five minutes, clean yourself up, and um, we'll call master. Well, I've gone out and... um. I've gone out to the yard. The boys were helping me clean up. You know, this guy come around. I didn't know that the boys have given him the scissors back because they're scared of him. Wow. But I didn't know this, you know. So I'm like, he's walked around and I've got a bit of an attitude now because I've just, I thought, fuck, I just beat him, you know. Like, course, I'm yeah. a mad cunt, right? Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, I've just bridged back up at him. He's looking like like at me dirty. They've called my star and I've went and stood right in front of him, like with my back to his face. Like, you know, just like being a cocky cunt. Yep. Um, they've called us in for master, checked all our hands and that, let us up the stairs. As we're walking up, he's like, I'll fucking get you for that, you know? And I'm thinking, what the fuck? Like, he just said that in front of the screws and that. I ran up, you know, expecting him to, like, throw a kick or something, and I grab his legs, like, because yeah. he's up the stairs. Yep. He sort of ran in front of these two Islander blokes that lived between us. Um, I know he had court the next day or two, and he, he'd come back, and um, when I'd gone out to the yard, everyone like loves me, you know. They're like, "Oh, bro, you're the maddest." You know, this guy's been standing over people and that for a while. Yeah. They were giving me pot and all this stuff, you know, trying to give me gear, but I didn't touch gear. So I was just like, oh, "I just want the weed, bro." Yeah, yeah. Um, I felt like a madman, you know. So I started bridging up at him through the door and that. When he got back from court, yelling out to him, um, my celly was telling me how to say things in Arabic so the screws couldn't hear it out the window. So I'm saying all this shit thinking he's at trial, right? I, I go out the next day, I look up and his door's open. And I'm like, shit, you know, he's out because he, he's one out. Yep. So I'm like, fuck. And one, one out means like you're in a yeah, cell by yeah, yourself. Yeah, of course. Yeah, so at Long Bay, when you when you go out in the morning, you get a, um, they do a bag search, then they do a pat down, and then you go through the wands, yep. like the um, metal detector. Yep. Well, I've gone down, you know, and I'm real like alert. I've told my cellmate, like, watch out, you know. I'm looking around like, where is this dude? Um, I've gone through, haven't seen him. Get out to the yard, and the yard's like a double yard. So I've run up to the top gate and tried to look in the next yard. And as I've done that, I've just heard this commotion down the bottom. And I've ran back out, and I've seen my cellmate running out. And as he's run out, he's got this guy on his back, and he's thrown him off. And um, he's turned, ran back in, apparently dropped to his knees, put his hands up, dropped the scissors. Um, 
And as I've looked at my cell, mate, like I didn't know at first he got stabbed. And I'm like, bro, have a fucking go, right? And I've gone to run down there. And he's just turned. His eyes were, like, wide open. He's just, like, burnt and blood out his neck and that. It's like, he's just covered in blood. And I was like, oh, shit, right? So I've run, I've sprinted down there and tried to get through the gate at him. There was, like, so many, there was, like, heaps of screws there. But I've, there's no way I could get through, you know. They shut the gate. I was booting the gate. They've grabbed him, locked everyone in. It was just me and my belly out, out in the yard. Um, yeah, the screws locked everything down, and they're so worried about getting this guy. I'm, I'm thinking, fuck, my cellmate's bleeding to death here, you know? Yeah, yeah. And they just left him for a good few minutes, but like, just bleed. And I'm like, chief, like, clinic, nurse, something, like, help him out. Yeah. And then, um, yeah, they, can't, they ended up coming and getting him. He got a um, punctured lung. He got him a couple of times in the shoulder, the back, the, the neck, behind the ear. Like, got him good. And, um, yeah, they, they shipped him off to Segro on that, but, yeah, he ended up getting my cellmate instead of me. Fuck, and that was... For me that, bridging up, yeah. Yeah, and that was to get back at you, like... Yeah, and but that was like, yeah, that was that was really intense back then for me. Did you did you have, have revenge on any of the cunts that give the scissors back to him, like... Oh, nah, nah. Oh. Look, I, I sort of knew that the yard was scared of him, you know? And, okay, yeah, yeah. And he... His family sort of had a reputation outside and that. So I, I sort of understood it because I was from the areas and that. Like, I, yeah, yeah. I, I know, like, you know, some families people just don't fuck with. Yep. I just ended up in a spot where I was in that, like, vicinity the and he was about mode. to pull like, scissors on me. So it was on, you know? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was like that fight or flight thing, you know? And I was just like, bang, got ya. Yeah, wow, well, yeah. So this is. Yeah, this... but then, yeah, he got my cellmate and I was like, you know, I got a bit cocky for a while, you know, like, used to being outside, but. Then you realise, like, you are confined in these walls with these people and you don't know who's who and, you know, anyone could, you could go to another yard and his mate could be there and you don't know it and then, bang, you get got from behind, you know? Yeah, yep. And this, yeah. Is, this is sort of like, this. we're, we're talking, what, early 2000s? Yeah, 2000 and, um, I think this was 2002, 2003. Yeah, okay, yep. yeah. Yeah. It actually closed, closed it down a short time later, a couple of months later and, to put all cameras through the yards in in the um, MSPC, like nine, ten, and seven and eight wing. Yeah, okay, yeah. But before that, yeah, it was just one little camera that was between the shower and the yard, so it was just like a little like size of a laundry that it covered. Yeah, okay, yep. Yeah, yeah, well, bro. So what you you um you end up doing three years, brother? What what sort of happened once yeah. you got out? Um, oh fuck, I was out for. I think two or three weeks. Yeah, right. On. Come back, went back in. Yeah, for another three. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yep. So. Yeah. Nearly, nearly identical thing happened. I went to a um. We'd been out partying. There was a party in my street. Went up the road with my mates. Rocked up. Um. We were outside the party, and they're like, "Oh, they're they're telling us to leave." And I said, "Oh, let's just go." You know, like I'm on parole. Yeah. And I was a bit. I'm like, I don't, I don't want to go back straight to jail. You know. <clears throat> Look inside. My mates been surrounded by these blokes. So I walked in with him, like behind him. I said, "Oi, bro, let's go." You know, I said, "I'm on parole, let's go." This dude like rips his shirt off and starts bridging up, saying he'll knock us both out. And I just turned around, like give him a left hook, knocked him straight out, and then it was just on. You know, big big brawl, and um, we ended up taking off like from the party. Um, <clears throat> went down the street. The police actually pulled me up and everything, and told me to go home. There was a big fight up the street, and then I'm like, "Oh yeah, sweet, <laughs> thanks." You know, yeah, yeah. Um, but, they come to my house the next morning, checked my hands and all that. I said, no, nah, I don't know nothing about it. Um, yeah, two weeks later, they've come and arrested me for it and said, oh, it was you, you know. Then I had a cut on my hand from something else and they said, oh, that's from the fight. Went to court and that, you know. Like, I, I tried to beat it because I thought, oh, I've just done three years for something I didn't do, you know. Like, yeah, karma's course. going to reverse on me here and <laughs> I'll get out, you know. But, yeah, I got found guilty. Yeah, right, while I'm, yeah, what, two weeks out too, they would have fucking slammed you, like. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. On parole, yeah, I was like, this is fucked, you know, <laughs> like. Yeah. So it was like, yeah, I don't know, like, I sort of expected to go back before, um, like, when I got out. Uh, but, like, it's, it's weird, you know, like, when you go to jail, the first few weeks, you, you, you're so dead set on not coming back, you know, and you've got all this shit in your head like, fuck, they just let me out. I'd go to work, I'd do this, I'd start a family. Like, I don't want this shit, you know. But the more you're in there, like, as a human being, you're just going to adapt to that. And you, you adapt to it so well that by the time you get out, you, you actually don't give a fuck, you know. You're like, yep. yeah, you, 
by the time you get out, you're having fun, you know, boys, you're, you're friends with boys. And yeah. so the longer you're in there, the more likely you are to go back, you know. Yeah, definitely. And, you know, and yeah. also too, you know, like um, I found – Getting out and having nothing on the outside, you know. I went into jail as a, yeah. as a fucking raging junkie, bro, and you know, clean myself up in there. You know, don't get me wrong, I didn't um, go downhill in there, but I got out, bro, and then had nothing, and it was like, fuck, I'd rather be back. Yeah, in there, you know, like at least there was. Yeah, same, a lot of times, same. Yeah, yeah, you know, so much easier. Yeah, getting out with half a Centrelink check, like. Yeah. Fuck! What am I going to do with this? Yeah. Like, I can't even pay rent for one week. Yeah, exactly right, mate. Hundred percent. Yeah. No one, no one wants to give me a star. Like, fuck! I know how to kick a door in. Like, I know that much. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. I, yeah. I didn't learn nothing in jail. Like, they didn't teach me no life skills, no no work skills. Like. Yeah. No. yeah. So, like, um, did you have, did you have any sort of drug addiction th- in your, in in jail? Like, was you? Um. Yeah. Yeah, I ended up getting getting um like with the bupe and that in jail. Yeah, um, <laughs> bupe. Yeah, fuck. I think that's like ninety nine percent of boys that go in there, you know. Yeah, definitely, bro. In the yeah. fuck, man, it's like gold in there, isn't yeah. it? <laughs> yeah, it is. Yeah. yeah, just like yeah, that's that's it. That's everything in there. Yeah. That's your currency. That's yeah, yeah. And I've, I did I've like heard... earlier on, like it was weed, and I because I'd had that from the streets, but. The longer it went on, and um, the better they got at stopping drugs coming in. Like the less people would bring weed because it stings, and they just bring the heavier drugs because you know they're smaller and they're going to make more money off them too. That's so, right. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Yeah, and it's, it's funny, you know. I hear I hear blokes up like up here in Queensland talk about the boop and that, and it's like. They like where I was from. Where I, I done jail in Tassie, bro, and everyone spots it, smokes it through a pen, yeah, you know, on foil. Like they talk up here, they they put it with water and drink it and shit. It's like I snort it and that, yeah, it, snort it, yeah, yeah. So that was a yeah. good thing for me, bro. I was like, fucking, yeah, no, nah, definitely spot it, you know. Yeah, yeah, and I'd, I'd always done that too. Like smoked it until I think once, maybe within, maybe after the cigarettes went or something. Yeah, you know it's hard to get cigarettes or whatever to spot it, and yeah, we ended up. Um, someone showed it to me one day. I ended up doing it, and then I was like, "Oh fuck, that's way better," you know, way easier. And yeah, yeah, yeah okay. I think I was just you get addicted to that little habit of spotting it, or it's like a cigarette, you know, like yeah, yep, definitely. Yeah, you end up there's that many fucking half bent biros and shit around the place in there where yeah. they're you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, so I, I, so this this second big lag and bro, I, um, you know your, your famous story of where you're, uh, where you stabbed, bro. Is, is that when that happened, or is this later on? Um, oh, that was like the fourth lag, and yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. It's sort of so that was a bit later on, yeah, yeah. Um, that happened, um, twenty seventeen. Yeah, okay. So this is going on like ten, twelve years later, you know. Okay, yeah, yep. Yeah. yeah. So, well, um, just before you go into that, bro. Now, I believe yeah. you, you you got on the ice at some stage. Now, that that was my drug of choice, bro. That's yeah. you know, I, I have a fucking hectic seven year addiction on that shit, bro. Like I know that yeah. drug better than better than most. You know, um, sort of when 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 did that all happen? Can we give have a bit of a spill on that, bro? Oh yeah. So um, I went to um, I ended up at the end of that second uh, lag, and I ended up in the gang unit in um, Lipko, which is like, um, it's like the, I don't know, you have obviously heard of the Supermax down here? Yeah, yep. Yeah, so it's just like a similar program to that, but it's just for like, mo- mostly like gang members, you know, or someone that, that's going around stabbing heaps of people, and like, they'll just grab like the most violent people, and they'll, they'll put the, the 10 people in there, you know, like top 10 people that are doing whatever, you know, yeah, okay, yeah. and they'll just call it a program, but it, it's just a, it's just like, Torture, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, you, yeah, you've got nothing in that in there. So my last 13 months of that lag, and I, I spent with nothing in the cell, just um, it's like a said, grow cell, but you don't mix with no one, you don't talk to no one. They take everything off you, even your undies, you know. You're in jail, undies, jail, socks, jail, everything. Yep. No buy-up, no, no nothing, you know. So yep. I ended up like, yeah, like I just ended up in my head in there, you know, and like – I don't know if it made me stronger or if it if it was traumatic for me, but by the time I got out, I'd, I'd adapted to it so quickly, and and it was just like I don't know, like it was just like um I thought it was easy, 
But then when I look back, like, I think, fuck, how the fuck did I cope with that, you know? Yeah. Like, I mean, it's, like, I'm in a room the size of a fucking laundry with nothing, like, for 13 months, yeah. looking, at, looking at blank walls. But, yeah, after that, I got out and I was with this girl and um, ended up on the bit, bit of heavier drugs, you know, selling drugs and that because it's too hard to get a job or whatever. Um, drugs were easy, you know. You make a lot of connections in jail too where it's easy. You can just go get a start off someone. 100%, yeah. So, yeah, yeah. Oh, ice was the new thing, you know. Ice was the new thing that was coming out. And, um, like, it had been out for a little bit, but not so prevalent, you know. Yeah. Whereas now it started to be everywhere. So, yeah, I'd got some ice off. Like, people were throwing it at me, you know. So yep. it's only natural that I started smoking it. Yeah. And um, that's the thing with, with that drug. Girl. Yeah, sorry, that's the yeah. thing with that drug too, bro. It, it's impossible to to sell it and not take it, you know. Like, most, most, yeah. most junkies and, or, or ice addicts, for example, yeah, uh, are hunting for it at fucking three a.m. on a Tuesday yeah. morning, you know. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. I, get, I get that for sure. Like yeah. if you're going to go to bed, you cut out half your business. Exactly, like. <laughs> bro. Hundred percent. I've been there yeah. and done it all too, for sure. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Then um yeah, so this girl I ended up with, I ended up um just just started getting on it and and going and going um like selling it a little bit. Ended up back in jail for um I ended up bashing my sister's ex boyfriend. I someone told me that like. You know, he said some bad things or um, he, he could have possibly, um, like, hurt her or physically or anything, you know. So I was drunk at the pub. I seen him. I jumped all over him, got more time. And it was just at that time where I got into the ice. So as I went in, I'd taken a heap of ice with me. I'd showed my girl how to bring it into me and all that, you know, and, yep. and just started pumping it in jail. Yep. Ended up with a big habit in jail, got out, um, just – yeah, I was just running wild on it, and it was just in my head that, I, like, you don't give a fuck about anything when you're on that shit, you no, know? No, like, bro, yeah. you don't care if you die tomorrow, you just want to live on that shit, you know? Like, yeah, definitely. It's, yeah, it's so addictive, and it's so, like, mind-altering, too. Yep. Yeah. To where you think that your life could not be better without it. Yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. just and like, the minute so, you're yeah. starting to come down, brother, it's like you're fucking, you need that next one. Hell, right? yeah. You know, like you're like fuck. Whoever's got it, I'm getting it. Like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. definitely, yeah, yeah. But yeah, ended up, ended up um, selling a lot of it, and um, yeah, just got into it like really bad. And and as I got out, she um, ended up getting with someone else. So yeah, yeah okay. I'd broken up with her, and I was going through a breakup, getting out, and just having a heap of fucking ice. Like, it just made my, made my addiction like ten times worse. You know? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I didn't care if I died. I was standing over everyone, like any anybody that, like, yeah, I just asked people, like, just give me an address, bro, for someone to stamp and I'll give you a cut, you know? Yeah. <laughs> like, that was my thing, yeah. Go on taking everyone's tick list and that and then just going around collecting all these tick lists and... Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So, what, you... Did that last long, bro? How long was your ice addiction for? So, it went for, like, um, from 20... Oh, 2012 to 2016, yeah, the no. end of 2016. Fair trip, Yeah, so, it? yeah. Then I got locked up. I took this guy's car off him. Um, This girl broke up with her boyfriend and he, he took all her stuff and that. So she rocked up to my house. I was like, oh, just bring him here. I'll take his shit off him, you know, like, perfect opportunity. Let's go, you know. Yeah. yeah. Took his car off him and that. Got done the next day. Um, Went back in. For a little bit, I was I was using the ice and that still, still getting the scan in, still had my ex that would do stuff for me, and, and you know because she could make the money. So there's a lot of money in, it, especially in jail. Yeah, definitely. Like yeah. yeah, there's a lot of money outside, let alone like jail, like quadruple, you know, hundred like, percent times ten even, bro. Yeah, bro. especially through COVID, it was fucking, yeah. you know. Definitely. Yeah, oh, COVID, yeah, fucking oath. <laughs> People were buying, like, strips strips of bupe in, in jail, bro, through COVID for, like, two grand a strip and shit, like, yeah. you know? Yeah, yeah nuts, so. eh? Yeah. Yeah, well, then, um, yeah, what happened there? Um, yeah, so I went in on that. Um, I was in for a bit, causing a bit of a, causing a, bit of a ruckus. I was at MWRC, like, still water. Yep. They've grabbed a heap of me, me and a heap of my mates, put us, um, They've locked us in in this pod. Um, like we were there for months. Like I was there for months. They started shipping boys out, like trying to move them to other jails and that. Um, we'd come out for one hour a day. They'd, they'd have screws lined up with gloves on every single day. 
for us to walk out. We'd have to walk out one by one. Like, couldn't even walk out with our cellmate. Yep. Come back in. I ended up trying to, I'm like, fuck this, bro. Let's ring the fucking, like, put us in sad, bro, or fucking do something with us, you know? Yeah. Like, charge us in sad, bro. What the fuck are we here for? Like, you can't just keep us here, you know? So we're like, we're just asking the ombudsman. I'm like, just ring the ombudsman, bro, and ask him to ask the jail to charge us or let us out. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, these screws come down to me and he's like, oh, if you fucking, um, they wouldn't answer him. The screws wouldn't answer him for months. They're like, you know, the ombudsman's gone, oh, they've got three days to answer us and all this bullshit, like multiple times. Right? Yep. And I'm going, listen, I just want to know what I'm locked in for. Or, or am I charged? Like, what the fuck's going on? Like, I'm in limbo, like in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, I'm not allowed to like talk to anyone, see anyone. So he's come. The pippers come up, like one of the seniors. Yep. And he goes, "Oh, if you you ring him again, we got intel. You're going to get stabbed at fucking Goulburn, rah rah rah." Fuck. Um, I'll move you straight there. So I was like, "Like, I don't." That's how I respond to threats, you know. I'm like, "I oh, will fuck you. I'll ring him right now." Yeah. So the second I got out, I told the boys, "If I go straight to the fucking phone, bro, like fuck this, can't threaten us." Yeah. All right. <laughs> so then, yeah, he got me, but yeah, so. <laughs> They, um, the boys rang up, ombudsman, whatever. Next morning, they call me, pack your shit, you're going to Goulburn. I'm like, all right, sweet, you know. Got to Goulburn, when you get to Goulburn, there's, there's always like a, a couple of, yeah, they'll try and give you a couple of options, you know, because it, it's known to be a pretty hectic jail. They said, oh, this, this yard, this yard. I said, nah, put me in that yard, because the, yeah, I knew they were going to fucking, you know. Yep. I thought, you think I'm fucking scared, I'll go out there. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, I went out there, went up to them, the, the three that ended up stabbing me, but so hey boys, like big smile on my face as I do, cocky cunt. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. <laughs> Still like, like, oh hey bro, hey bro, like this, you know, like being quiet. And then, and I'd had dramas with all of them in the past. One of them was actually in the gang unit with me to like the point where I was trying to give him forms to mix with me and that. Yeah. Um, the other two I'd had drunk, but never at the same where they were all together, you know. And I'm like, oh fuck this, you know. So I'm doing laps. One of the boys is trying to mail me. He's gone. Oh, Pato, just watch out for them cunts. I'm like, bro, they're not going to do shit, bro. Fuck them. They're fucking gronks, you know? Yeah. yeah. Going up to, I've, I've gone in the showers because the showers were open and they open them for half an hour a day at Goulburn. Yep. Like back then, so you'd, you'd have to get all your showers done and out, you know? Yeah, yeah. And they'd have a couple of screws or whatever, like, but not in the shower. So I went and sat in there for the last five to ten minutes, you know? I was like, fuck, if you want to get them, come in, you know? I thought at least I can put my back to the wall or like, yeah. I can trap you at the door and you can't all come in at once. Sat in there, they didn't come in. Went out over to um, buy up my mates. Like, bro, you should go talk to them. You know, I'm like, fuck them, bro. They're fucking gronks, you know. Look, look, I'm not worried about them. Like, fuck, so many people trying to mail me. Boys calling out, oh, bro, do you need a blade? Do you need a blade? I'm like, nah, bro, I'm fucking sweet, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> These cunts. <laughs> yeah, they've gone, um, someone, someone's went and got on. Like, I don't know if they were just waiting for them to get on so they could have drugs or, or if they needed the drugs to fucking, you know, grow a backbone. But, They've waited. They've got some ice, got some zannies, taken it. I ended up going to the clinic because I'd burnt my foot a day or two before and they, they were doing the dressing on it. Okay, yep, yep. Well, as I've gone over there, I found out that they've gone up to a couple of my mates, pulled the blades on them, said, if you fucking mail him, we're going to get you, rah, rah, So I've come back to the yard. These boys are um, trying to have some goop or whatever, you know, and then I'm like trying to talk to him. He's like sort of ignoring me. I'm like, what the fuck? So I start doing laps, and I'm thinking, fuck this, I'm going to ring my fucking um, ex, right? So I go to jump on the phone, jump on, I'm just like listening to the phone ring, and then I just feel like bang, 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 like I felt two taps on that side and one on that side. Yeah. So I like turn this way, I'm thinking, I knew straight away, you know, I'd never been stabbed before, but like, it's just like, you just know, you know? Yeah, yeah. And it wasn't like a punch, and it, it, I didn't really feel it, but I just knew like, like that, you know, I was just like, what the fuck, right? So I turn that way. Them two have like sort of run into the same spot and fell over each other. I've turned the other way. I had no idea who the other person was, like at first. He's um bolted down the end of the yard. I fucking shit myself. I'm thinking, fuck, this guy's going to get me in the spine. Like, first sport, you know. I'm thinking, yeah. if they hit, I've seen people get hit in the spine before and just drop. You can't yeah, move, you know. Yeah. Yep. yeah, so I'm just spun and I'm like trying to back up to the fence and fucking watch, watch these two cunts and then trying to figure out who the third person is. And they're coming in like, rah, like, like swinging their blades in there, like fucking Mohicans trying to scare me or something. I'm thinking, fuck, well, I knew like individually, like they had a bit of fear in them, you know, yep, like yep. To, to confront me. So I was like, just kept like jumping at them individually. Yep, yep. But, and then try, 
still trying to back up at the same time. Um, I ended up running that one, hitting one, then the other one just fucking went bang, 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 like got me a few. Fuck. I was like, fuck, tried to spin out of that, <laughs> fucking get me back against the wall again. <laughs> the squad's come running over. I just see all these gas coming over me. I'm like, fuck, right? Now I'm thinking my eyes, my my breathing, you know, so yeah, I just tried to get under it and still watch them. And then I seen their feet coming in. They must have thought I wasn't watching, so their feet have started running in. I've jumped up and, like, just thrown, like, a faint kick, like, just like a warning kick, you know? Yep. And they've just like jumped back again and I've just like jumped under the fucking gas again. They're like, the squad's run in and fucking like charged at them, fucking got them with the gas and the spray and all that. Yep. I've got under the spray. As soon as the, the squad's come in, he's just like, fucking stay right there. And then I've looked at him, I'm thinking, no fucking way. Look, the first thing in my head was like revenge, you know? Yeah. I'm thinking, fuck these times, fuck I don't want them to think they've got me or I'm not having a nurse come in and wheel me out. But yeah, yep. So I was like, no, I'm fucking sweet, right? So I didn't, I didn't, I was fucking red. Like I didn't even know, you know? Yeah. Like I was just covered in blood. Um, I've jumped up and I've just seen him look at me. He looked at me like, what the fuck, right? And I've just like walked out of the yard, like walked straight at him and they're all like fucking backing up away from me. I would have looked like fucking Freddy Krueger or Jason or something, you know, just like, <laughs> yeah, bro, fuck and then man. I walked out of the yard thinking I'm fucking sweet, right? And I'm just staring back into the yard, but fuck, I would have looked like, you know, like I was about to die or something to yeah, them. Yeah. And then, um, then they're fucking, um, yeah, they've gone back, got gas and whatever. The squad's jumping on them. I'm looking, looking through the fucking gate. Like I'll fucking kill you, cunt. Like that's what's in my head, you know? Yeah. Someone's yelling out to me from the other yard. They're like, fuck, Pato, you all right, brother? You all right? I said, yeah, I'm fucking sweet, bro. No effect. I was like, like, I couldn't say anything that had happened to me. Yeah. I thought I was sweet, you know? <laughs> then, um, yeah, I walked, walked to the, um, they were like, quick, hurry up, hurry up, run, 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 like trying to get me to the clinic. And I'm like, no, I'm fucking sweet, you know? Like, I refuse to believe that they'd got me. Yeah. And I'm just like walking, you know, like walking, like fucking, I was taking a fucking Sunday walk. Yeah, yeah. Then a few of my other mates on the way, they're like, bro, Pato, you right? You right? I'm like, yeah, boys, I'm right. But in the clinic, they're like, mate, you're, um, you're all right? You're all right? You're going fucking white and shit. I'm like, what? Then they, like, they're freaking me out now. I'm thinking, what do you mean I'm going white? You know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> going, you're all right? And then they're cutting my clothes off me and shit, you know? I'm like, what the hell? I'm sitting there naked. I'm like, what the fuck is going on, you know? Yeah. I could see a little bit of blood, but most of it was like, it, I got all stabbed in the back, you know? Yeah. They got me um nine times. They got me in the back of this shoulder, back of this shoulder, twice in the back of the head, and then five times in the back. Yeah. And one actually hit my spine but didn't go right through. Fuck, so one lucky, went, bro, yeah. One went right through the back of like, near my scapula, went right through. This down the back here went right through, punctured my lung. Um, Yeah, the squad come in, the, the nurses were there, like there's heaps of nurses there and that, and they're like, oh, you're right, you're right. And I'm, I kept thinking I was all right. They're like, oh, listen, we're going to give you something. Fucking, um, they've given me whatever, like, um, the ketamine. Yeah. I, I don't know if they give me ketamine at first or if they just give me something because I didn't trip out at first. So I just remember, like, I don't remember too much about that bit after that. Yeah, yeah. I just remember they were sort of bandaging me around my whole body. They were just, like, fucking wrapping me up like a mummy, you know? Yep. Um, then they're like, come and search me for somewhere. I'm thinking, what the fuck are you searching me? Like, the squad's coming in, patting me down and doing all this shit, like, as if I'm trying to escape. I'm like, what the fuck, man? Yeah. <laughs> then, um, yeah, they put me on the ambulance. But once the ambulance got there, they're like, oh, we're just going to give you something to help you out, you know? And I'm like, dang, they've given me this fucking um, ketamine. And I'm like, holy shit, you know? Like, like I'd taken, like, a lot of party drugs and everything, but I'd never, like, spun or started tripping like that. I remember I got to the... um hospital and they were like um oh the police were there detectives and i just i was trying to get more more of what they were giving me you know i'm like oh i'm like i can feel it i can feel it you know pain and they're like where and i just remembered i got in the back of my shoulder first so i was like on oh, my shoulder my shoulder you know yeah like, i didn't even remember my back yeah and then they're going um they're going oh wait just wait we want to ask him something i'm thinking who the fuck's that right and then i look and there's two detectives there and they're going, oh, do you know, um, and they said two of their names to me straight away, you know, and I said, um, I said, yeah, they're my good mates, right, and just smiled at them. And then they're like, oh, don't worry, you know, and walked off real dirty. Yeah. And then they've given me more ketamine. They didn't have an MRI scanner there to see, like, actually where I'd been hit. So, um, yeah, they're like, oh, we're going to have to fly into Goulburn or what, uh, to Canberra, sorry. So I'm like, oh, yeah, sweet thing. They put me on a helicopter 
and giving me a cat of mine, and then like the noise from the helicopter, like the yeah, like just sent me into like a fucking another dimension, you know? Yeah, I was like in this fucking world where it was like it was like I don't know if I was like going digital or if I was I thought because I'm Buddhist, you know, I thought oh, I'm gonna pop out in another body. Yeah, like I'm going in, like I've just lost my life. I'm like fuck, I can't die. What do you mean I'm dying? You know, but every little like was changing my thoughts at the same time as well. So it was like I was having a million thoughts at once. I'm just like, bang, 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 bang. Yep. And I'm just in this like wire going, do, 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 do. Like yeah. just turning every time I hear that noise, you know. And I'm like, it was just so fast. But like I could still have that over thought above it all. Like where I'm like, fuck, what's going on? I'm in another dimension, like, you know. Yeah, you, you sort of, you all know these little things are coming. A, yeah. Having all these little and thoughts. And I'm just and, waiting. Yeah. I'm thinking, am I about to see a light and pop out like, you know, like as a baby, you come out, and I'm yeah. thinking that's what happens. You know, like that's the light. Yeah. I'm thinking, fuck, I'm about to be reborn here. Like, what's going on? Yeah. And yeah, it was just like that feeling just stuck with me. You know, like I was just like, fuck, that's like it's like I was closer to the feeling of life than I'd ever been. Yeah. It was like it was just crazy. You know, like it was just like fuck, man. Like, like everything that had happened in my life before that point didn't matter so much. You know, like I was yeah. just like fuck. There's so much out there. Like there's so much. Like I just wanted that feeling. Like you know, I wanted to know what life actually was after that. You know. Yeah, yeah. It was, just, it was it was crazy. Yeah, hundred percent, bro. And as as we spoke about before the podcast, and and also like I said, I listened to your podcast today with um with our uh, Ronnie Isherwood man, and um yeah, and and even his his spiritual awakening is a snap out as well. You know, like um, yeah. But yeah, like yeah, as we spoke about, brother, I I did DMT, man, and I had such a similar experience. Like I I was dead, and I, I remember thinking to myself while I was in it, and like I I had it through it. Like I, you know, mine wasn't because of an injury or something like that, bro. I did it because yeah. I, I wanted to do it. You know, I smoked it through a bong and yeah and whatnot. But but man, fuck, it was like no matter how how hard I try to explain it, bro. I just sound you just sound fried trying to explain it. Exactly, yeah, same. You know? Like when I'm trying to explain that, I'm yeah. like. Fuck, I don't know how to explain this, like... Without looking, sounding like a Fruit Loop. I know. Yeah. Hundred percent. I know what you mean, like, fucking... But, yeah, I died, bro. I was... I, I swear I was dead. And I remember thinking to me... But same deal. I had that overthought. And that's what... That's what... Um, yeah. It attracts me to that story of yours. Because I had this overthought where it was like... I knew that... Like, that this thought was like... I, I know that I'm thinking that I'm dead. Yeah. You, you, you know what I mean? Like, but... um. Yeah. yeah, the same deal. I was like expecting to come out into this other world, and I'm thinking like, yeah. But then I sort of started to fuzz back in, in and out, in and out, in and out, and end up coming too. And then I was like, I remember just sitting there looking at my brother and, and the rest of the boys like, what the fuck just happened? You've got <laughs> no idea what just happened, like. And but bro, ever since it, yeah. it changed my life, bro. You know, I never, I've never even smoked another cigarette since, like. Um, yeah, <laughs> you know, I smoke. I was a heavy smoker for fifteen years, and I don't even smoke ciggies and nothing anymore. Like, and and I have had a couple of couple more hits of the DMT since, like, because it was very yeah. interesting, you know. But it's never ever done the same same thing again. It was just that first time. Yeah. You know? Um. But yeah, no. It's like I love that story, of yours, bro. And 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 so that went on and to change your, your whole outlook on life afterwards. Yeah. Yeah. But did I sort of like? I still use drugs a little bit for a few weeks after that. Yep. But it's like it, um, it's like it, I don't know, it was like it was like a piece to the puzzle, you know? Yep. And then the other piece was painting, like art. Yeah. So yep. I, got, I, got, I got sent back to, um, I, got, I went back to the yard. When, they wouldn't let me back in that yard. I went into the yard that was closest to it. Went straight up to the fence because I wanted to be like, yeah, no effect. But I just fucking started doing legs in front of the yard, just staring at that yard, like, you know what I mean? Like, yep. let them yep. know I'm Storage sweet, bar, you know? Yeah, like, fucking oath, yeah. Yeah. I'm thinking, fucking no effect, cunt, you know? Yeah. Got sent back to Silverwater because I had court. Did these guys get, when done, I, get done for it, though, or what? Or, yeah. 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 Yep. It was all on camera, like, yeah, in the middle of the yard, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But they've, um, yeah, so they've sent me back to Silverwater. Got back there. They they took all my pencils and that. They take your pencils there for some reason. And, and I'd only just started drawing again when we were locked in that time. Yeah. So um, when I got back and they took my pencils and, I was just like, I was sort of depressed, you know, because I've never really been got like that. So I was like, this is fucking bullshit. Like, I can't think that I'm a weak cunt and all this shit, you know, like, yeah. I'm meant to be the fucking hectic cunt, like, 
Yeah. So I'm, I'm like, sure, though, bro. It, you know? I'm sure the way you fucking, you know, like not many cunts will fucking get up and walk out and laugh and, you know, after nah, you've nine times. When I got back, yeah, you know, so everyone you was still... like, you're a mad cunt, bro. Like, yeah. you're a staunch cunt. Like, that was fucking hectic, like. Yeah, yeah. Like, heaps of boys said it, you know? Yeah, yeah, definitely. I was still like, yeah, I was still like, fuck, like, what in a fucking, like, if I just got a hold of them or when them two fell on the ground, if I just jumped on top of them, but, yeah. like, you know, like, Everyone else doesn't know I'm looking for a third person, like. Yeah. But yeah, it was like I got back there and I got to the wing and I was like, "Fuck this," you know. Like um, I had a heap of fucking ice, got a heap of pot, fucking um, puke, fucking cigarettes, fucking had a phone. I was like, "Fuck, man." Seeing my mate, and he was actually painting a mural in the wall, which was which was weird because you usually don't get paints there, and and they just had him because he was an artist. So yeah, I hit him up. I said, "Bro, give us some of them, you know. I'm going to paint these fucking um." Notice boards in the cell, in the four hour. And he's like, oh, yeah, yeah, sweet. Just keep them dark, whatever. I'm like, yeah, sweet. So he's giving me some. Went in the cell that night. And I'd been, I'd been drawing for a few weeks and doing some mad stuff, bro. But fuck it. I just put some fucking paint on the can. Like, it was green. I, remember, I just remember the green. Yeah. Because I love green. So I thought, I'll just start with green. I didn't know how to use a paintbrush. So he was an Aboriginal artist. So I thought, I'm just going to do dots like he does. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah. So I thought, all right flip the brush, fucking put a green dot down, bro, and the colour just sucked me in, you know, and it was just like, it was just something that, like, but I do it all the time now, see colour, but it, it was just like, it was just the, the other piece of the puzzle just went bang, you know, and just locked in, you know, it was just like, fucking just connected them two pieces together, you know? Yeah. I was like, fuck, ever since that day, like, I did not stop painting, like, yeah. that was it, you know, look, I used the drugs I had in that, but. I wasn't out hunting drugs again, like you had a new when passion, that all went. Bro, yeah. I hadn't, yeah, and when I hadn't had them for a few weeks, I was like, I didn't, I didn't feel like ringing anyone up and going, oh, send me anything, or you know, yeah, yeah. And then after a while, and not having them, boys would get ice. I'm like, no, I don't want it. You know, I just wanted to sit in the cell and paint. Like yeah. I just, it just changed me so much, you know. And I, it, it was a good thing too because I knew that everyone would be thinking, fuck, that is off the plot. He's just been stabbed <laughs> in the back. Right? Yeah. <laughs> he stopped training like I stopped training for six months because I was like I don't want people to think I'm training for them even though I've trained my whole life I just want I just want to fucking see them after not training for a fucking year and chop them all just yeah. so everyone knows how shit they are you know like yeah. Yeah, I just yeah. wanted to like prove a point you know but then like yeah I wasn't going to see them Yeah, they were in Segro then they, they signed on to NA so they didn't come out like they sort of woke up to themselves yeah. fucking um <clears throat> Plus the screws put their nays on us because they they seen what happened, you know. So there's no way we're going to meet, especially in there. Yeah. Um, they've gone fucking um. Yes, yeah, so I just kept painting and painting and painting, and I knew everyone was thinking like, and I couldn't paint that good at the start, so yep. it helped even more to motivate me because I knew people were doubting me, and then I thought, fuck this, like, like imagine I just become famous, man. Like I'm just gonna fucking these cunts will be fucking like what the fuck just happened you know like manifest bro so I just yeah. kept painting oh, I'm gonna get better every fucking day like you watch you know and I'm gonna get out and I'm gonna fucking shock the world yep yeah and, and you did just that and I did bro and I just fucking kept doing it and doing it and getting better and then eventually I got to a point you know where even when I got out I still wasn't that good but I just kept going because yep. it was that that motivation and them doubters I was like yep. no I have to fucking win like I can't give that up because everyone's going to laugh at me. Yeah. So then I just got to a point where even I noticed and I looked at my paintings and I was like, holy fuck, man, these are fucking mad. Like, like I've seen paintings in the galleries now and that, like I know they're fucking mad, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And definitely. I just had all that confidence to show the world and just started picking up galleries everywhere. And Yeah, so how did, that, how did all that start? Like, obviously, all right, you've got out of jail and you, you've, you've picked the paintbrush up yeah. in jail. You've got out yeah. and stuff and – um. How did you first ever, you know, like, um, I guess where was the the door that opened into becoming this fucking artist? Oh, so, like, so the lucky thing I did was um, with the drugs that, I, like, if I didn't have drugs to sell in there, like, like near the end or, or always had, had dupes to sell in that, you know? Yeah, yeah. Where I could save money and so when I got out, I could buy a heap of paint and all that stuff and set myself right. up to paint. Yep, yep. So I just started, I thought, all right, I'm going to go in competitions. I started Googling things like, how do I become an artist? How do I get with the gallery? How long does it take? Like, what are the odds, you know? And everything was telling me, no, 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 you're not going to make it. It's fucking very difficult. Um, you need to go to same. uni. Like, yeah, it's yeah. extremely difficult, yeah. yeah. And I was like, fuck, like, they were like, oh, you can expect to get into a gallery 
um, after 15 years or 20 years or, you know, you'll be lucky to ever make it into a competition. I was like, holy fuck, man, what, what the hell is going on here, right? Yep. I'm like, wow, this is so hard, you know, but I'm like, I'm just going to push, you know, and then maybe I'll, I'll, I'll try and find a job in between. Well, I went into a competition um, called the Naked and Nude, which is in Tari. And I didn't realize how much a good competition it actually was. Well, I actually got into the competition and I'd only been out for a couple of months. First competition I entered. And I was like, wow, they let me in the competition, you know. So I had a look at all the people on the thing and I literally Googled every single finalist. There was 50-something of them. Yep, yep. And I, I seen every single finalist had a gallery. Every single finalist had gone to university for art and all of this. I'm thinking, I'm the only one, like, yep. without any of that, you know. Yep. And it just, like, spurred me on. And I still hadn't even sold a painting at that point. Yep. I still hadn't sold one painting. Um, <clears throat> got some advice off a lady that worked at the gallery and she said, oh, you should go online and um, try Instagram. And yep. a lot of people have a success on there. So I was like, all right. So I learned Instagram and um, I went on some online galleries and stuff. Eventually, <clears throat> like with my Instagram, like I, I learned, I'm trying to learn the algorithms and get my art. I'm thinking the more people that it gets in front of, it just takes that one person to see it and then be like, oh, man, it comes to my gallery, you know? So yeah. I just kept doing that and trying to get it in front of as many eyes as I could, you know? I was like, yeah. I don't need to sell them. I just got to get it in front of eyes. Yeah. And then um, eventually someone just said, oh, oh, do you want to try this, you know? And um, we'll try you out. And I was like, oh, fuck yeah. And, and I'd been with the, uh, some online galleries and selling some for a little bit. But then, yeah, I dropped the online galleries, got with the outside gallery. And I was so like, um, like very prolific painter. So I, I like to paint a lot, and I had so many ideas, and I was just always painting. I just loved it. Yeah, and it's so, so unique like, oh, to your like, style, bro. You know, yeah. Like, who would have ever yeah. thought? Yeah, you know, it's like, yeah, yeah. I, I realized after a while that it's just me. Like it's my personality that I'm painting. Yeah. So I'm like, why do I paint? Like, like what is it? And I'm like, oh, that's fucking me. You know? Yeah, yeah. But yeah, I got I got with these galleries, and I'm thinking. Oh, I've got an exclusive contract with them in Australia. So I said, fuck, what, what do I do? You know, look, I, I want to paint more. Like, what am I going to do with all these paintings? So I asked them, I said, oh, our contract's just in Australia, right? And she's like, yes. I'm like, oh, fuck this. I'm going to promote myself in um, other countries. So I just Googled the country that bought the most art. I was like, who buys the most art, you know? Yeah, yep. <laughs> who buys the most contemporary art? Who buys... Like which countries are the most influential with art, yep. and I'm I just advertise there in their major cities. You know, I'm a, I'll, I'll promote myself there. Yep. Picked up a um, Korean gallery, then a Taiwan gallery, then Israel, and yeah, ended up galleries all over the world. Like within twelve months, I had like 13, 13 galleries around the world. Unreal, bro. Unreal. And yeah. And so, how long ago? Like, how long have has this been happening for? So from. 2019 I got out, um, 2020 I got with the first gallery like in the middle or near the end-ish. So in the last three and a half years, like from the first gallery to having all these galleries going in, um, I've been in a Christie's auction, a Sotheby's auction, like the two biggest auction houses in the world, sold in both of them like overseas, Hong Kong, um, been in the um, Art Miami, which is one of the biggest art fairs in the world. Yep. Um, hung in like been hung in rooms with um, Picasso's and uh, like George Kondo and like like massive art like the biggest artists in the world you know yeah. like had my work hanging in the same room as them so yeah yeah it just went like all in that three and a half years and from from the first time I googled it and they told me not to expect to get into a gallery within ten years or something I was like fuck how the fuck did that just happen you know yeah and every little every little step you know like every little level up I was just like fuck it just like boosted me, you know Let that fire in the belly, bro. You, yeah, yeah. You and then it, it would make my paintings better because it would just reinforce everything. And then it would loosen me up because I'd have that that confidence that oh yeah, like I don't have to try. Like I just have to do what I want, you know. Yeah. And then what what I want to do, and it comes out more naturally, and and then people actually feel what I'm putting out there, you know. Yeah. It's not forced. It's not yeah. Yeah, and especially you know now you like once you first started selling them and stuff, and it, like it would have just. You know, especially coming from the life you lived, bro. You know, you was like this. Yeah. You know this this hectic hectic jail cunt that's that's been stabbed and this and that and you know drug addict yeah. and all the rest. And who would have ever thought it would be art that would would be yeah. your, would be your redemption story? Yeah. You know? like, it's amazing, bro. It really is, and it's inspiring. You know, and yeah. um, 
you know, I suppose it gives um it gives, you know, young young guys that are, you know, just entering the, the um the the jail system and, and whatnot, I suppose yeah. it gives them hope, bro, I suppose. You know, yeah. like that somebody that like it, yourself yeah. can become, you know, whatever they want. Like Well, anything, yeah, like it, it can translate to anything in life, you know. It's more about and I said this a lot of bit, like you gotta show people things that they love, you know. Like people from jail or that go to jail, they find it easier to fall into that habit. But yeah. if you can put something in front of them that they like or that they, they get motivated or excited about, then, you know, it, it can totally change their path. Just send them off on another way, you know? Yeah. Yeah. 100%. And that's what it was for me. I never liked painting as a kid. I hated it. Yeah. And at school, I hated it, you know? And, and, and it was just um, it was just a fluke that it just come back in front of me, you know? Or, or it's like, you know, or it was fate that it was meant to come back in front of me. But I had to go through all this shit in life to... um. So that I could paint like that, so that when I did paint, it was going to come out like you know, like fun and exciting, and yeah. and the total opposite from what I'd lived, you know. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I guess I suppose the next question is, bro, do you have any regrets? Like, like, like I, 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 I sort of do, but then I think, fuck, it wouldn't have made me who I am, you know. Yeah, that's what I'm getting at, like, you know. Yeah. Yeah, I think. Oh, what if I found out when I was like younger, you know, like. And then I think, would I have painted like this, or would I? I could have painted better. Who knows? Yeah. So it's hard to say, you know. But yep. I've always lived with like, <clears throat> I do have regrets, as in the sense of I wish I'd never spent that many years in jail because you don't know how many years you have on the earth. So like, I think, fuck, what if like, you know, most of my, like, I could die next year, and and most of my adult life was spent in jail. Yeah. Like, what if I just learned that lesson in the first year or the first few months and. You know what I mean? Like yeah. I still lived pretty hectic for them them young years of my life. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Like I, I would I still ha- have the same personality? I think so. You know, like all close to it. Yeah. But yeah, because a lot of that jail is it's repetitive. Yeah. You, you don't you don't learn much more from spending one year to two years to three years. Like yeah, it's just the same shit over and over and over and over. Yeah, you know, and, and as you can probably admit, yeah. you know, once you've got that um, once you've got that reputation of you know of a you know, run the yard and this and that, bro. And you and you're doing yeah. all these years in jail. Then you live off that. That's that's the fire in your belly. You want to, yeah. you know. So yeah, you're hundred percent right. You know, it's um, yeah, no, nah, unreal, bro. Your your story's fucking awesome, brother. I love it. Um, hence why I got you on here, bro. Um, we, we're yeah. com- coming to an end, brother. Um, is yeah. there anything else you wanted to wanted to talk about, bro? Or um, no, no, I, I like that, mate, it was a good one. Yeah, cool, bro, cool. Um, yeah. So, you know, maybe there's some, some of my viewers, listeners out there that they haven't heard of you, bro. Can you give us a bit of a spill yeah. on your socials, where, where people can find you? So um, my socials, yeah, um, Nathan Patterson Art on Instagram. And I've got TikTok, I just started the YouTube as well, Nathan Patterson, which I have my stories on them. So my art and my stories are sort of not mixed up, you know, but yeah, if you follow my socials, the links should be in all of them to the others as well. Yep. And my last name, P A W D I S O N. Most yep. people spell it wrong. <laughs> I'll have all your links um, pop up on the screen, yeah, brother, if, if, if you're watching. And um, and they'll also be in the description on all platforms as well, brother. But, um, yeah. Look, and bro, if there's any questions in that, they can put them down in the comments. And Yeah, cool, cool. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome, like, brother. share, of course. Hundred percent, yeah, hundred <laughs> percent, brother. We we know how it works. Um, I, I've noticed too, bro. Yeah. Your fucking YouTube goes alright, eh? Yours, like, yeah, yeah. I just started. I've, I've got over two. I, they just monetized me yesterday too. Yeah, well, bro. There's some fucking big dollars yeah. there, bro. When you if you if you're yeah, doing right, so like, like, yeah, see. yeah. yeah. One more question I want to ask, bro. Sort of what um what sort of prices, if if you don't mind. Elaborate on it. What sort yeah. of prices and stuff do your um do your paintings and stuff go for? Do is it a do you live on the money? Like is it a? Oh yeah, yeah. I make a lot of them. Yeah, yeah. But it's um, like once you get into galleries, like you're pretty sweet. But um, yep. so I, I go on US dollars because it's um because most of my galleries are international. But I get about three thousand dollars a square meter. Yeah, what? and my um like three thousand US and. But most of my paintings are bigger than one square meter, you know. Yeah, yeah. And I've sold like fuck, I've sold seven, eight hundred paintings in the last few years. Wow, bro. Yeah. Then I've got um, I do works on paper now too, like smaller, and I do some prints too because 
it's like some people can't afford to stick 10 grand on their wall, you know? So, yeah. like, yeah. yeah. And I like, I like everyone to be able to afford my stuff. So, yeah. Yeah, cool, bro. Cool. Yeah. Guys, go and check him out. He's um, he, his paintings are very, very unique, and um, and yeah, they it's it's just just the story that comes behind it is is awesome, you, you know. Um, look, bro, it's been an absolute honour having you on the show, Nathan. Um, yeah, thanks, Donkey. Keep being you, brother. Um, yeah, hope you enjoyed it, guys. That's Nathan Patterson. Thank you.